spinal injury initially was 35 years ago. Um, and uh, I had work done by another doctor uh, over in Ann Arbor. And uh, that lasted for about 20 years. And then it wore out. And I began to experience a lot of trouble with my lower back. Uh, my daughter, Heather, had gone to Perez Cruet uh, for some neck problems that she had had. And uh, she said, Dad, she said, you know, with all the things that are going on and the complaints that you're giving out here, why don't you uh, go see the gentleman that did my neck surgery? Went and met Perez Cruet and uh, um, liked him. He, he's, he was a very caring kind of a person and, and I could relate. And uh, so I followed his suggestions and had MRIs done and so forth. And uh, he came back and he said, John, he said, uh, the, the work that you had done previously is giving way and uh, we really need to go in and fix it. And uh, the thing that impressed me the most was the time that he took um, after the MRIs were done in explaining every single thing that, that he was seeing and the fact that uh, there were a lot of corrections that had to be made and how he was going to do it. This is a 70-year-old patient, who uh, John, who presented basically with severe neck pain uh, as well as progressive difficulty walking. Um, he was found to have a complex spinal condition that we call DISH or diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. Uh, frequently these patients have compression of the spinal cord uh, in the cervical region. They can sometimes have it in the thoracic uh, as well as uh, compression of the cauda equina in the lumbar area. Um, and so the evaluation is, is critical that you really determine where the problem is. He had marked spinal cord compression. On his examination, his reflexes uh, were brisk. He had compression uh, at a number of levels in his cervical spine. Uh, frequently, these are bony uh, osteophytes that are compressing the spinal cord. Uh, so the approach that we took to address this was from an anterior approach. Uh, you can see here, uh, after surgery, uh, we did a discectomy at one, two, three, four, and four, five levels. Uh, we put bone inside the disc space, and you can see how this patient's spine is. They have these bridging osteophytes spanning multiple segments uh, of the, the spine. His, his neck is almost completely autofused. He even has bone in the back uh, above the spinous process. There shouldn't be any bone there. That's an abnormal formation of bone. John's uh, prognosis is excellent. He's made a full recovery. Uh, he's actually even refinishing his floors. So uh, we're very happy with, with how John's uh, done. Um, there isn't anybody else in the country that I would go to. Um, as far as any kind of a problem that dealt with my spine. Um, with the work that Dr. Perez Cruet has done in several occasions on me um, and watching the changes in technology and watching his development of new procedures. The experiences that I've had have all been incredibly good because of Michigan Head and Spine Institute and uh, uh, Dr. Perez being part of that group that uh, uh, I wouldn't go anywhere else.